topic is about uh, soil formation and development. So soil formation and development, we are going to tackle here about how soil uh, develops. Okay? Paano ba nagkaroon tayo ng soil? How, paano ba nagkaroon ng different layers yung soil natin? Bakit ba iba-iba yung lupa natin? Okay? So it is because of the different factors affecting soil formation. So before that, uh, we have what we call soil genesis. So diba, it is uh, very familiar, the word genesis. Genesis means origin. Okay? So soil genesis tackles about the origin of the soil. So uh, soil genesis is the mode of origin of the soil with special reference to the processes or soil forming factors. So we have uh, different soil forming processes as well as soil forming factors that we will be discussing later on. So these processes and soil forming factors are the one who is responsible for the development of the solum. Solum is what we call the true soil. Okay? When we say true soil, it is a uh, soil as is. It is it doesn't uh contains rocks or other unweathered minerals. Okay? So if uh you have a uh, read a uh, soil profile so we have a uh, soil horizon which uh, designates as capital letter uh, symbol letter a and b so that's uh the solum the the horizon a and b yung horizon c with, uh, that is not considered as a, a solum because it is a uh, part or there are uh, some uh, parent material involved on that layer so this is a uh, definition uh, from uh, Brady uh, in 1985. So, uh, this one is the stages of the soil development. So, uh, in stage one, so as you can see here, a mere bedrock or rocks. So, then the, uh, the, the climate takes effect, specifically the rainfall and also the temperature. So, yung bedrock natin, pagka, uh, naapektuhan siya ng, uh, ng climate, ng ulan at uh, ng temperatura, so it will begin to disintegrate or magkakaroon siya ng cracks. Then, it will uh, uh, have some changes. Maaaring uh, magkaroon ng, mga, ng mas maliliit na bato in sizes at maaaring mabago din yung chemical composition ng certain rocks na iyon. So that will yield to the stage 2 which uh, the organic materials facilitates disintegration. So as you can observe also, di ba yung mga rocks natin minsan, mat, uh, minsan pag may mga dumadaan na tubig, uh, may mga nahanginan or, or something like that. So makita mo may mga tumutubo na, na na fungus or lichens or mga organic matter. Di ba? Yung mga green, mga lumot na tinatawag natin. So that will also cause the disintegration of rocks. Okay? Mas mapapabilis nga yung pagde-decompose ng rocks natin. Okay? So, until later on, so stage 3, makikita natin, there are horizons form. Horizons means ito yung horizontal layer ng soil natin. Kung makikita nyo, may soil layer na dito. Okay? Ito. Itong A horizon natin. So, A horizon, na, nakaform ng A horizon, then below A horizon is the the parent material or the sea horizon. So sea horizon commonly it's composed of uh, unweathered uh, rocks and minerals. Okay? Then later on, makikita natin there is another uh, horizon that is that that will be uh, developed which is the B horizon. So and so on and so forth. Okay? The more na the more na tumatagal yung soil natin and na expose siya sa different factors mas dumadami yung layers ng soil natin. Okay? So, uh, if you can, if you have questions, so you can just uh, chat in. Then, uh, one of the primary factors that, uh, that yields to the formation of soil is yung tinatawag natin parent material. So, what are the common uh, parent material? So, these are the rocks. So, yung soil natin today uh, can be possibly derived from the weathering or the decomposition ng mga rocks natin. Okay? So, rocks are aggregate of one or more minerals. So, uh, one, uh, a piece of rock 
is composed of different minerals. Okay? So, the, the study of rocks is what we call petrology. It is uh, comes from the Greek word petros, which means rock, or stone, and logos, which means to study. So, it is a basic uh, knowledge, or I think you know it already. So, what are the different classes of rocks? So, we have the igneous rock, which are derived from the uh, solidification process of lava and magma. Then we have the sedimentary rocks, okay? These are the rocks that is formed from uh, sedimentation of, uh, of uh, different sediments. Then we have uh, metamorphic rocks, which comes from the uh, uh, metamorphism of either mm -hmm. igneous or other uh, sedimentary rocks, okay? If you have uh, done your uh, activity number one, origin of rocks, I think... Uh, the the these three are a part of that so first uh this we will discuss about the igneous rocks so these are primary rocks formed or crystallized depending on the chemical composition of the original molten material so these rocks the composition specific the chemical composition of igneous rocks depends on the molten material chemical composition okay once na yung molten material natin it uh, crystallize or it, it becomes solid, so that will yield to an igneous rock. So they were once in a molten state, very hot inside on earth, which were forced upward to the surface on cooling they solidify. So these are uh, very common on uh, volcanic areas, as we all know that uh, that's responsible for the uh, ejection of uh, magma and uh and uh, to become uh, lava okay so example of igneous rock are the andesite and basalt rocks which are actually the uh the parent material of soils in baguio city and foothills of bataan okay so uh, other than rocks so we also have uh different volcanic tuff or adobe so other uh other ejecta that uh, comes from uh, volcanic eruption is yung ating mga adobe or volcanic tuff. So these are uh, the parent material of the rice field of Marik Makati and Alabang, Rizal, and those of Imus and Tansakabite. Okay? So uh, these are the example of uh, igneous rocks. So we have granite, we have rhyolite, we have gabbro and basalt. So as you can see here, the upper uh, portion is lighter in color, which we will be identified as a felsic igneous rock. Okay, when we say felsic igneous rock, these are common light colored igneous rock. Wherein the dark colored one, such as the gabbro and basalt, is identified as a mafic igneous rock. Then, uh, as you can see, based on the grain size, or yung uh, makita nyo yung composition ng uh, ng rocks. Ito, yung, yung, uh, yung granite natin ay may malalaking uh, butil or yung coarse grained na rocks. So that can be identified as also as coarse grain. While the rhyolite and basalt is identified as a fine grain. Okay? So when we say uh, an example of a pelsic uh, coarse grain igneous rock, so granite is one of the example Because it is a uh, light colored rocks with uh, coarse grain. Okay? Then other uh, example of igneous rock, we have a tuff, which is uh, a felsic because of its light colored, and we have a, a pumice, which is a, a dark colored uh, rock. So actually, a pumice is uh, is one of the rocks with uh, with low density. Okay, uh, hindi hindi ganon ka uh, ka dense yung uh, kanyang composition. That can it actually float uh, on water. Then uh, our uh, rocks can uh, our igneous rock is uh, can be a, can be uh, classified into two. We have extrusive igneous rock, and we have the intrusive igneous rock. So what are those extrusive igneous rock? So extrusive igneous rock are rocks that cools quickly, and as a result of these rocks are fine grained or a slack of crystal root. Okay, when we say ex extrusive. So, sa labas siya, 
ng uh, ng uh, ating uh, earth layer dun siya nag-solidify so because uh, mas malamig yung uh, temperature sa ibabaw ng earth compared uh, compared to uh, compared below so that will uh, that the the molten uh, lava will solidify easier mas madaling mas solidify so that will results to a fine grained uh, igneous rock wherein a magma when solidify uh, below the surface of the earth so that is considered as an intrusive igneous rock but because of the uh, because of uh, lower uh, higher temperature so mas mainit sa ilalim so mas ma mas matagal mas matagal mag solidify yung yung uh, magma so that will yield to a coarse grained igneous rock Okay, when we say, again, when we say extrusive igneous rock, these, uh, these uh, rocks solidify quickly that results to a fine-grained uh, texture igneous rock. Where in we when we say intrusive igneous rock, these are rocks formed below the surface of the earth and it, uh, it solidifies slowly uh, resulting to a coarse-grained igneous rocks. So after igneous rock, we have what we call the sedimentary rocks, okay? So as we all know, diba, yung mga sediments natin, they are going below, okay? As you can see here in this uh, illustration, ayan, nagkaroon yung, uh, 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 nagkaroon ng formation ng rocks dito because of the sediments. So once na yung sediments uh, goes down, kaya yung sedimentary rocks natin is more commonly found uh, on below slope yung sa mga uh, uh, nearly level na lugar uh, near uh, near water bodies so yung mga sediments na yon once they uh, uh, undergo sedimentation process they uh, they are binded together with other with other minerals they form sedimentary rocks so sedimentary rock is formed by erosion as we all know, erosion is the movement of uh, sediments uh, from upward uh, elevation going down, okay? Mainly due to uh, water, through wind, or even uh, gravity. Then sediments are moved from one place to another. So after the, the sediments move from higher elevation to lower elevation, mm -hmm. that sed sediments will be deposited. So the one that is deposited below is the older, the older one, while the the sediments depositor uh, above is the uh, younger one. Then that uh, that uh, that eroded uh, sediments will undergo cementation and compaction. So the process of compaction and sediment uh, and cementation is what we call litification process. So once na nag-undergo ng litification process yung mga sediments natin, so that will yield to a sedimentary rocks. So we have uh, what we call the plastic sedimentary rocks. So uh, plastic sedimentary rocks, these are made of fragments of rocks cemented together with a calcite or quartz. Okay? So... Uh, if the sediments, like for example here, as you can see here, the solid uh, rocks, when they are uh, cemented by a calcite or quartz, that will be identified as a plastic sedimentary rock. And one of the example of a plastic sedimentary rock is Brescia. So Brescia is a term most often used for a plastic sedimentary rocks that are composed of large angular fragments, which are over 2 millimeters in diameter. The spaces between the large Angular fragments can be filled with a matrix of smaller particles or mineral cement that binds the rock together. So another uh, classification of sedimentary rock is what we call the chemical sedimentary. Okay? Chemical sedimentary rocks. So these are minerals crystallized out of a solution to become a rock. So uh, as we all know, solution is composed of a solvent and a solute. So once the solution precipitates the, the, the water content, the, sol uh, the solvent on the solution, the, the solute will now uh, 
will now remain and that will form a chemical sedimentary rocks, yung mga solid part natin. Okay? So, example of a chemical sedimentary rocks is limestone. Limestone is a chemical is a sedimentary rock composed of primarily calcium carbonate in the form of the mineral calcite. It most commonly forms in clear, warm, shallow marine waters. So, uh, for example, uh, yung sa ating mga marine waters, like for example, ocean. Okay? So, ocean waters composed of, uh, of calcium carbonates in, dissolve, uh, in, uh, in a solution form or in a dissolved form. So, once na yung, uh, yung, yung uh, marine water natin ay dumadaan, uh, may iwan sa, sa, sa seaside, okay? Then, na iwan doon yung mga solute or yung mga calcium carbonate. Then, calcium carbonate now will accumulate and undergo lithification process that will yield to a limestone, which is an example of a chemical sedimentary rock. So, example of a uh, prepared material comes from a uh, limestone is uh, the soils in the foothills of Teresa Rizal and Cebu, San Miguel Bulacan, and greater parts of Cebu. So the last uh, classification of sedimentary rock is what we call the organic sedimentary. So from the word organic, it comes from the remains of plants and animals. So one of the example of organic uh, sedimentary rock is coal. So coal is an organic sedimentary rock that forms from the accumulation and preservation of plant materials usually in a swamp environment. So when we say swamp environment, it commonly uh, uh, it commonly contains of uh, water bodies. So pag may water bodies, it uh, inhibits the decomposition of of uh, a certain uh, plants or animals, yung mga domains nila. So that will uh, will uh, will yield to a uh, to an organic sedimentary rock, which is for example a coal. So coal is a combustible rock and along with oil and natural gas, it is one of the three most important fossil fuels. So yung mga domains ng mga plants and animals uh, that exist uh, on the early uh, ages, so uh, na-preserve sila doon so that uh, it turns out na naging coal sila, so that's, uh, that, as, that becomes a source of uh, fuels and other uh, 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 natural uh, gases and oil. So, uh, last uh, classification of our rocks is what we call the metamorphic rock. So, a metamorphic rock is uh, comes from the word metamorphos, which uh, which means uh, change in shape. Okay, when a certain rock undergoes a a high pressure and a high temperature, so the, its composition will uh, will be changed. So there is a change in shape. So that will yield a metamorphic rock. So changes with temperature and pressure, but remains solid. So so where in Earth does it actually occur? So actually, uh, it it usually takes place deep in Earth. Kasi uh, below uh, the Earth's surface, there is a high temperature and pressure that will, uh, that favors uh, metamorphism para makapagmabuo yung ating mga metamorphic rocks. So there are two classification of metamorphic rocks. We have the foliated and non-foliated. So first one is uh, the foliated metamorphic rock. So it contains aligned grains of flat minerals. As you can see here, there is an alignment of white and black layers, which is different in composition. So that uh, rock can now be identified as a foliated metamorphic rock. So once na yung ating rocks, like for example, an igneous rock undergoes metamorphism, so the more na mas uh, tumatagal yung metamorphism process niya, the more na nagiging foliated yung, yung rocks natin. Okay, example of foliated uh, metamorphic rock is nice. So 
is foliated metamorphic rock that has a banded appearance and is made up of granular mineral grains. So it typically contains abundant quartz or feldspar minerals. Then uh, uh, the non-foliated uh, metamorphic rock, so it is the mineral grains are not arranged in planes or bands. As you can see here, there is no uh, identifiable uh, uh, grains, okay? Parang pure siya or fine grains siya. So an example of, um, of a non-foliated metamorphic rock is a marble. So marble is a non-foliated metamorphic rock that is produced from the metamorphism of limestone. So a limestone, again, is an example of uh, sedimentary rocks. So when a sedimentary rock undergoes a high pressure and temperature, that can be result to a formation of a marble. So a marble now is an example of a non-foliated metamorphic rocks. So just like a, a limestone earlier, so it composed of calcium carbonate. So here is the uh, list of uh, other examples of metamorphic rock. So amphibolite, uh, quartzite, and uh, phyllite. So amphibolite is a foliated. As you can see here, the, uh, the different grains are uh, showed, even though they are not properly arranged in layers. But as you can see, uh, the, the grains are already arranging, okay? It must be on the middle uh, part of metamorphism. Where in quartzite is considered as a non-foliated non-foliated uh, metamorphic rock where phyllite is considered as foliated. So that's must, uh, that's, uh, that must be foliated. That's letter F, okay? So characteristic of common rocks. So how those uh, rocks, the given uh, how, how those igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic rocks contributes to the formation of soil. Okay. Of course, their chemical composition can uh, result to a certain chemical uh, contribution to the composition of soil. Like for example, andesite. So andesite composed of uh, feldspar and uh, ferromagnesian minerals. So feldspar are commonly uh, uh, basic uh, minerals composed of uh, we have potassium feldspar and other and other basic elements. So uh, and also ferromagnesian minerals, which is quite acidic. So it composed of iron and mag manganese and other acidic minerals. So because of uh, that composition, that will yield to a form uh, contribution of a neutral material to soil. So it, uh, it doesn't actually contribute to the acidity or basicity of the soil, but it, is, it has a neutral material. Compared to uh, basalt, which is higher in ferromagnesian minerals, it has a high pH of uh, materials, and it contributes to the fine texture. So basalt is an example of a fine textured rocks. So when that uh, rocks, when that uh, vassal uh, undergoes uh, weathering or decomposition, makakapag-contribute siya sa fine texture na, na soil. Okay? Then diorite, so andesite, so neutral pH, gabbro, Composed of also a uh, basalt, so it has high pH material. Then uh, granite, which composed of 50% uh, ferromagnesian, 30% quartz, and uh, ferromagnesian minerals. So that will yield to acidic material with some rapidly weathering packets at higher pH. So here is the list of uh, sedimentary rocks and their uh, composition. So because we all know that sedimentary rocks are or our combination of different rocks and minerals that is cemented together. So their composition is quite variable or nagi iba iba. Okay? So their uh, also their contribution is variable. But one of the most contribution of the sedimentary rocks is usually stony, yung soil natin, or mabato bato. So we have here the uh the, uh, some of the metamorphic rocks. 
So we have knees, marble, quartzite, cyst, and slate. So their uh, potential contribution is uh, higher pH to neutral soil forming material. So the, as they are formed on, uh, uh, form from a metamorphism of other rocks such as igneous rock, so their contribution to soil is quite uh, similar to the contribution of soil of that from igneous rock. Kung saan sila nagmula. The, uh, commonly, yun din yung contribution nila sa, sa soils. Okay? But uh, common, uh, commonly, soils produced are not usually productive pagdating sa mga ating mga metamorphic rocks. So here is a uh, rock cycle. As you can see here, so yung igneous rock natin, so they are, after, uh, they are formed from the cooling of magma. Okay? A magma, pag na-eject na yan it, uh, sa volcano, that will, uh, that will result to uh, lava, lava ejection. So once cooled, pwede mag-form na extrusive igneous rock or intrusive igneous rock. So when that igneous rock undergo weathering and erosion, so that will uh, yield to the formation of sediments, wherein that sediments will undergo lithification, which is compaction and cementation, so that will yield to a sedimentary rocks. Okay? Then uh, a sedimentary rocks and igneous rock, when undergoes heat and pressure, so that will yield to a metamorphic rock. Okay? So as you can see here, sedimentary rock cannot be become an igneous rock directly, okay? Because sedimentary rock and metamorphic rock must be first uh, melt as a magma before it becomes an igneous rock. So again, uh, as uh, I said earlier, rocks is composed of different minerals. So minerals are a natural, so it is a solid, it is an inorganic, Definite chemic, it has a definite chemical composition and the crystal, uh, crystal structure due to our internal arrangement of atoms. So we have two types of minerals. We have the primary and secondary minerals. So primary minerals are those that exist in soil in their original state and are very resistant to decomposition. So commonly, yung rocks natin, one nag, once nag-undergo ng weathering, specifically the physical weathering, yun yung nagiging primary minerals natin. But if a certain minerals under, or rocks undergo chemical and physical weathering, so that will yield to a secondary mineral. Secondary mineral arise from the chemical breakdown of the least resistant primary minerals. So the secondary minerals natin, they are commonly the clay, the clay fraction. Ito yung... Uh, Di ba yung clay natin is the smallest uh, particle or uh, separates na meron sa soils natin? So that is actually uh, a sec an example of secondary mineral. Wherein yung sand and silt fraction natin sa soil, that is uh, actually yeah, an example of primary minerals. So these are the primary minerals. We have olivine, biotite, sodium plagioclase, augite, muscovite, potassium feldspar, Quartz, calcium plagioclase, and fern blend. Then uh, we have the secondary minerals, which are uh, smaller in uh, diameter. So we have uh, silicate clay or alumina silicate. So example of is example of that is a phyllosilicates. Then we have the soluble minerals like uh, calcite and dolomite. Which are uh, which compose of uh, carbonates and the uh, sulfates and the gypsum. Okay, dolomite is uh, quite familiar for you. Uh, dolomite is actually a carbonate of uh, calcium and magnesium. Okay, then we also have oxides or hydroxides of iron and aluminum, or what we call the sesky oxides. So example of that is the hydroxide of, of aluminum, which is a gibsite. We have hydroxide of iron, which is gitite. And we have the oxide of iron, which is hematite. Then we have uh, non-crystalline, or yung ating hindi nagpo-form ng crystal, na, na secondary minerals. 
example of that is the allopane and immobilite, which is amorphous or non-crystalline type of aluminosilicates. So here is a sum of example of primary and secondary minerals with respect to their chemical uh, composition or formula. So quartz is SiO2 and uh, such. G-type is iron uh, oxide with uh, hydroxide or FeOOH or FeO2H. Okay. So ito yung dolomite natin. It's carbonates of calcium and magnesium. So here, here are the other examples of uh, secondary minerals that is very common. So that's our, about the rocks and minerals. Now we have here the factors of soil formation. So factors of soil formation, we have actually five factors of soil formation. This is, uh, this is actually uh, studied by a Russian scientist which uh, named uh, Dokochev, which is a further, uh, further research and, uh, and uh, elaborated by, uh, by Hans Jenny, mm -hmm. which is considered as the father of uh, soil science. So uh, we have here the five factors of soil formation, the climate, the topography, topography, which means the elevation or the relief of the, the soil. Then we have the time, the plants and animals, and the parent material or yung rocks natin, rocks and minerals. So Hans Jenny, so uh, for you to uh, to be able to uh, to be familiarized, you can uh, you can use uh, mnemonics chlorp, okay, chlorp, which means climate, organisms, relief, parent material, and time. So, actually, Hans Jenny formulated this, uh, uh, this formula in order to determine how soil is uh, formed. So, soil, S, capital letter S, is actually comes from the functional factorial or the interaction of that uh, specific uh, factors. So, meron tayong uh, CL, O, R, P, and T. So, ayan yung mga factors. So, F, uh, F yan. So, that is the interaction of different factors. Then, merong, uh, there are three dots. After that, uh, three factors of, of that five factors. So, that three dots means that there are other factors na pwedeng maka-apekto ng, ng soil formation natin. Like, for example, man. Okay? Even though man is considered as an organism, but uh, because of the uh, the greater the impact that uh, na na nung, uh, nung man sa formation ng soil, so uh, minsan hinihiwalay siya. Okay, minsan yung man is considered as the sixth uh, factor of soil formation. So uh, the climate first we will be discussing about the climate. So climate determines the speed, character of soil development. So, kung paano nakaka-apekto, di ba? Di ba we, uh, here on Earth, we experience different climate. Di ba? Like for example, dun sa arid regions natin, sa mga dire areas, makita nyo may mga, may mga sand dun sila. Bakit ganun yung, yung soil nila more on sandy? Di ba? Unlike here in the Philippines, meron tayong uh, true soil talaga. Okay. Meron uh, medyo makulang nga yung soil natin dito because of uh, because of of acidic acidity. Okay? So why? Because climate can be one of the factors. Kasi iba yung climate nila doon. Minsan lang sila makapag ma-experience ma ng ng rainfall. We're in dito sa atin, 'di ba? Uh, commonly 5 months umuulan then uh, uh, then or 6 months 
then 6 months naman uh, tuyo or uh, or dry yung climate natin. Naka-experience tayo ng weather na na, na mainit. So mas mabilis yung yung effect ng climate dun sa sa decomposition ng rocks and minerals natin. So that's how climate affects the formation of the soil. So also climate uh, affects the living organism and plants found in an area. Di ba bakit sa 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 arid regions mga cactus or mga grasses lang yung mga tumutubo. But dito sa Philippines we have a uh, we have uh, trees, we have uh, large trees, we have uh, forest. So climate can also be the reason why na differ yung ating mga organisms. Okay? That will yield to formation of different kinds of soil. So uh, components of climate, first we have the temperature. So for every 10 degree centigrade, biochemical reaction rates are uh, uh, two times uh, faster. So if there is a de decrease in temperature, there is a decrease of weathering. Diba? Pag mas malamig, uh, mas malamig yung temperature natin, of course, mas uh, mapipreeze yung, yung, uh, yung rocks and minerals natin that will cause less weathering. And soil forms will be slower. So mas mabagal map mapaform yung soil natin. Wherein, if there is a uh, there is a decrease again in temperature, there is a decrease in decomposition, which yields increase in organic matter over, overall. So pag uh, decrease in temperature natin, hindi magde-decompose yung ating mga, mga plants and, uh, and uh, animal remains. Okay? So pag hindi na-decompose yun, magpa-pile up lang sila na magpa-pile up or, that, or dadaglig lang sila ng dadagdag. So that will yield the increase of organic matter as in overall. Then what is that is all uh, that is uh, considered na pag syempre pag tumaas naman yung temperature uminit so mas mabibilis yung in decomposition process. So pag nabilis yung decomposition process, mas mababa na yung organic matter overall kasi magta-turn out na siya into humus that can be used up by plants and animals. Okay? Hindi na siya mag-accumulate. Then, then uh, another uh, component of climate is the pre precipitation. Okay? Yung precipitation or rainfall. So, water that moves through entire soil column including regolith. So, the depth of water is equal to the depth of weathering. Siyempre, once na umulan, okay, Yung, yung, yung water natin that will go infiltration or magpapasok siya sa lupa natin. So, yung inabot or yung depth ng tubig natin, okay, makaka-apekto yun sa depth ng weathering natin. Kasi kung, kung saan umabot yung, yung infiltration natin ng tubig sa soil, dun din uh, mas mapapabilis yung weathering process natin. So, water moves soluble and suspended materials. So, siyempre, di ba yung water natin, minsan uh, uh, ma ma ma-dissolve nila yung mga nutrients na nasa soil. So, that will uh, cause uh, the, the movement of, uh, of, uh, of materials and other uh, nutrients. So, there is, if there is an increased rainfall, there is an increase of leaching of nutrients. So, when we say leaching, it is the loss of nutrients, commonly downward. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, also, when there is an increased rainfall, there is an increase of plants. Diba? Pag minsan, diba, nakapansin natin, pag tag-ulad, tumutubo yung maraming damo. So, that will yield to the increase of organic matter. So, after ng, uh, ng, uh, ng climate, we have the factor which is topography or commonly uh, we call it as a relief. So, as you can see here, there is a higher elevation then lower elevation, then higher elevation again. So as you can see here, di ba, makikita nyo, iba yung soil dito, iba yung soil dito sa baba, iba din yung soil dito sa, 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 sa isang uh, part. Okay, it's because of the topography. Okay?
So in topography, we have uh, subfactors, what we call the slope or the steepness of the site. So the more na mas matarek yung lugar, okay, the more na uh, mas uh, na-erode na o natatanggal dun yung soil. So bumababa, naiiwan yung rocks natin. Where in sa other part naman, because of uh, per, uh, effect of climate or, or rain, so kahit na erode siya, naiiwan pa din siya kasi dito napupunta yung Dito, for example, humangin. Okay? Dito, bumabags, dito nakaka-apekto yung hangin. Dito, hindi gaano. Okay? So, that is because of aspect. Aspect is the which direction of slope paces. Okay? Minsan, di ba, pagka, pagka south facing yung slope natin, pag south facing, ibig sabihin siya yung nakaka-receive ng sunlight. So, pag nakaka-receive ng sunlight, mas mas mabilis yung precipitation, so mas mabilis yung weathering. Okay? Wherein kapag ka north facing naman yung slope natin or yung aspect natin, so mas malamig, so hindi ganong, uh, hindi ganong nakakapekto yung climate, so that will yield to lesser uh, weathering and also loss of, lesser loss of soil. Okay? So, topography can, uh, affects the 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 formation of the soil, but will, will also affect by other factors. Okay, makikita nyo dito, iba yung, iba yung plants dito, iba din yung plants dito. So that is an example of the effect of organism, which is uh, later on I will also discuss. So before that, we have the, the parent material. So parent material are the, uh, are the, uh, the source or kung saan nagmula yung yung lupa natin specifically the rocks and minerals so these are material from which the soil profile or material develop from the initial state so the nature of the parent material influences soil characteristics example sandy soil inherits its texture per, from a coarse grade rich in quartz diba uh, like uh, i said earlier yung effect ng rocks and minerals natin into the composition of soil natin, yung, if yung rocks natin is coarse-grained, so maaaring maging sandy yung soil natin. Where in, uh, if our rocks is fine-grained, pwedeng maging clayy yung soil natin. So we have three types of parent material. We have the sedentary or the residual parent material. So pag sinabi natin sedentary or residual parent material, kung saan yung, yung, yung rocks yung placement ng rock, dun na siya nag-weather. Uh, nag, nag okay? Yung residue ng rocks na yon dun siya nagmula yung soil natin. So that's sedentary parent material. When we, in terms of organic parent material, if our soil has, uh, these are commonly soils with uh, higher organic matter content. So saan ba manggagaling yung organic, higher, high organic matter content ng soil nato, natin? So these are from organic parent material. So these are commonly uh, commonly from the means of plants and animals. And uh, more specifically, commonly in pits and bog na nag accumulate yung organic parent material natin. Hindi, ko, hindi siya common dito sa atin kasi well, uh, dito sa, sa, like for example, dito sa Bulacan, kasi di ba, uh, yung, yung, pag yung mga leaf litters natin na decompose Okay, nagagamit uli natin kasi nagpa-farm tayo. So, hindi nag-accumulate or hindi nadadagdagan ng nadadagdagan yung organic uh, matter kasi na-use up natin. Then, the last type of uh, parent material is the transported parent material. So, transported means uh, yung, uh, yung, rocks and, yung rocks and minerals ay nanggaling sa, sa ibang uh, area na dinala ng iba't ibang uh, transporting agents. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, illustration of how a, uh, a parent rock, so that becomes to the formation of soil. Okay. So, that uh, parent rock uh, undergoes weathering and erosion. So, uh, so bababa na yung rock hanggang sa maging uh, flat na siya. Then, uh, the, uh, the formation of sand and then the mud then the mud will be become shale, then that shale will be contributes to the clay soil, while the sandstone will be contributes to the sandy soil. 
Okay, that is an example of a uh, of uh, parent material na nagiging uh, soil natin, yung sandstone and shale natin. So residual, parent material. So because of this uh, parent material the, the, that is affected by climate organism slope that will yield to the existing soil. So dito sa mismong area, kung saan yung rocks and mineral is present, doon na-form yung soil natin. Wherein yung transported parent material, ito yung sinabi ko kanina, we have the different agents. If the, the, if the rocks and minerals is transported by uh, moving water, we call that is uh, an alluvium deposit. Okay? Running water like uh, rivers. So, yan yun, yung uh, alluvium. Then we have deposited by lake, which is what we call the lacustrine deposit we have ocean which is marine deposit then there are sometimes uh, uh transported by ice which is a glacial till or what we call the moraine it, moraine deposit so this is commonly on uh, cold uh, cold climates area then we have the deep uh the transported uh by by wind which is uh if the if uh that parent material is uh Compose of silt, so we call it as Lewis deposit, and if it's sand, uh, we call it as a dune deposit, or yung sand dunes natin, di ba? Then we also have a volcanic ash, which is also transported by wind. Then now uh, we have here the colluvium, which is transported by gravity. Okay, when we say colluvium gravity, from higher elevation, makikita nyo yung rocks natin, or yung parent material ay, Bababa. Then we have the Lewis deposit, which is deposited by wind, specifically uh, the silt. Okay, and we have here the glacial till, which is deposited by ice. Then organic period material. So, uh, makikita nyo, di ba? The dark, uh, it is uh, dark in color. So, kasi yung uh, commonly, ito ay uh, makikita mo sa grasslands. Kasi yung mga grasses natin, they are commonly annually annual crops, they uh, decompose uh, yearly. So, mag-accumulate ng mag-accumulate yung, yung na-decompose na yun. So, that will results to in organic soil. So, it contains uh, it must contains uh, greater than 20% organic matter. Okay? Ito yung, for example, natin yung uh, pits. Okay? So, dahil uh, uh, saturated siya sa tubig, so yung 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 organic matter na na nalelessen niya yung decomposition nitong mga nitong mga organic materials like yung plant natin. So that will uh, accumulate or that will pile up that will results to a uh, organic soil. Then uh the other uh the other factors is what we call the organism or the biota. So these are uh the, these are all plants, animals, and microbial life. Okay? Soil biology, all sorts of organisms that aid in mixing organic matter decomposition, holding and releasing of water and nutrients. So that's how an organism affects the, the, the formation of soil. Okay? Diba yung, like for example, yung mga earthworms natin, they can easily... Uh, decompose uh, plant materials. Diba? And other microorganisms, yung mga microorganisms natin, they hold and release uh, nutrients and water in the, the soil. So as you can see here, in uh, temperate deciduous soil, so makikita nyo the soil is different okay, from this one. So this is an example of coniferous forest soil. So if uh, if the the the, the organism living on the area is a conifer, so this will yield to a thick acidic organic debris. So commonly, pag ganito yung mga halaman na tumutubo sa area, acidic yung lupa. Okay? Then again, uh, as, as, as I said earlier, the grassland, so yan yung, uh, yung mga grasses natin, they results to a thick, a dark... Uh, layer which is very high in humus. Then again, 
di ba? Sabi natin kanina yung uh, desert soil. So they have a thick uh, 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 what I mean is uh, lesser development of soil. Mas maliit yung development soil ng soil natin. Then we have here a tropical rain forest soil. So uh, other, uh, there is an acidic light colored formation of soil, yung ating alluvial layer. Makita nyo may, mga, may whitish part ng uh, may layer dito. So it is uh, very much affected yung soil formation natin by the organism presence. Although we all know that the organism is also dependent on the climate of the area. Okay. Then the last is the time. Uh, time is the longer the time, the more developed the, the soil profile. So we have uh, what we call the time zero. Time zero is where uh, where the climate and the other factors starts to affect to the parent material. So when soil first exposed to atmosphere or when a landslide exposes new rock for weathering or when flooding river deposits new sediment on a flood plain. So yun yung ating time. May time zero tayo. So once na yung rocks and minerals natin ay uh, naapektuhan na ng climate, okay, ng organism, so that will uh, start the formation of the soil. So the more, the longer the time, the more the soil is develop and the younger the soil the the less uh, uh, the soil is less developed and it has fewer layers or mas kakaunti yung layer ng soil natin then uh, the other uh, factor as I said earlier it is a man bakit? diba kasi yung a certain place kahit uh, pwede nang mabago agad ng, uh, ng, ng tao like for example, sa forest, pwede mag magtayo doon ng dam. Okay? Tanggalin yung mga puno sa forest. So they actually affects, uh, nakaka-apekto sila sa other factors ng formation ng soil and indirectly or directly nakaka-apekto din sila sa formation ng soil natin. 